I wanted to welcome a guest in. Her name is Lee Richardson. She's a professional counselor. She's also the founder of the Brain Performance Center on social media. She talks about how teens are getting more anxious the way that they're looking at things on social media. How do parents handle this sort of thing? We'll keep the phone lines open, too. Joining us now is a licensed professional counselor and founder of the Brain Performance Center, Lee Richardson. Thank you so much for coming on to KMOX. Thank you so much for having me. You see these studies that come out every once in a while, and there's a lot of studies that have to do with the way we consume media, the way we use smart devices, the way we use screen time. Uh, You know, when I was a kid, screen time wasn't really an issue. You know, my parents just had a television, and they had never heard the term screen time. Now, when I started to uh, study as we were expecting our first child, we realized screen time was a really big thing. And then we also realized that as the child develops, this could really impact their development as a human being, depending on how much time you sit them in front of a screen, or in some cases, once they get older, they start spending more time on social media. And there was this study that came out that teenagers who spend more than three hours a day on social media are more likely to develop mental health problems. I wanted to get your thoughts on that, and why do you think that is? Well, I think that's because social media provides us a venue to compare ourselves to everybody else. And you know, when you compare, there's always a winner and there's a loser. Mm -hmm. And what goes on social media, a lot of times those photos, are they're, they're photoshopped. You know, you see a picture of all your friends and you're not in it. How does that make you feel? Mm. So I think that, you know, social media is distorted. We all put our best foot out there. But is that where we live and where we stay every day? I don't know about you, but not me. I think a lot of uh, people spend time on it involuntarily. They, They just it's like a habit or a reaction to fill time which is dangerous, too, because it takes away, of course, from a kid's ability to have an imagination or, you know, it, they feel like they constantly have to be drawn to that thing whenever there's an open moment in their life. And it's it's this uh, really appealing thing because they feel like they're connected, but a lot of times they're really not. And, w- and what's interesting about the teenager side of things, I don't know if there's any teenager right now that is completely off of these networks. So there's a wide range of usage on these things, which is also hard to tell because each kid's different. Well, you're exactly right. And right now, FOMO, fear of missing out, that's a rampant disease because everybody else is going to see it. And if you're the only one that doesn't and you can't talk about it or you can't like it and tweet it, then you're the one that's left behind. Yeah. How much time do you spend on social media? Actually, not much. Mm -hmm. And I know... My, now, my husband loves Facebook. He loves to share. And I think it's the nature of the beast. I work with people, and I love, I absolutely love working with my, my clients. But I work with people all day long, and I talk to them all day long. At the end of the day, I just need to disconnect. Yeah. Um, A uh, licensed professional counselor and founder of the Brain Performance Center, what do you exactly do? Like, what, what do you do with your clients? Well, I do, I do a number of things. I approach the brain from a totally different standpoint. I do psychotherapy, which is traditional talk therapy. I do neurotherapy, which is working with the brain to put the brain into a regulated state without the use of medication. Uh, and that, that includes some neurostimulation, just retraining that brain to get into a regulated state. Hmm. It's regulated state. So how many times do you find that people come to you and they don't realize the state of their mind? As in, for most people, it might just be uh, they know something's weird and then that's different than what they're used to. And then some people might not be able to recognize this. Because I feel like a lot of people that are on social media today, they don't really recognize how much of a draw it is to them and how much that is really impacting their brains. They don't. And, and honestly, I think social media digital time is our new addiction we are addicted to it we get on there oh i like that you know i like that then we do it again and it goes from i like that to you know i want that i want to get on there and check it out and then it hits the hot spot i need that i have to have it and that's because what happens in the brain anytime whether it's 
you know, it used addiction used to be drugs and alcohol. Now it's online gambling and sex and mm. social media. But anytime you do something that you really like, your brain starts producing these neurotransmitters, dopamine. And dopamine is a really feel-good neurotransmitter. The brain's like, yeah, I like that. Well, if you do it all the time, those little nerve cells, they get confused. Yeah. It goes from, I like that, oh, I, I want that, to, oh, I need that. Mm. And I think that is that is the problem with social media. It's always there. It's instantaneous. I need my fix. I can't tell you how many clients come into my office. Lee, you got a cell phone charger? And I do. <laughs> but I'm like, no, don't. And I can I can see them melt down right in front of me. Wow. Lee Richardson from the Brain Performance Center, also a licensed professional counselor. So let's say parents have an issue with their kids. You know, when I was uh, growing up, you know, the parents would have the get off the video games. You're, you're spending too much time playing that. This is before really Internet, before there was the ability for, you know, even the, the thought of social media. You know, to, to me, social media was the kids down the street after school that would play hockey. That was like my social media network. And then, um, but the, today the parents have so much that they have to watch out for. They have to safeguard the kid against. There's so many different dangers out there that are injected right into their home if they see it or not. But the, somehow the kids, it, it's like they're being marketed to or being preyed upon. If you're a parent and you want to protect your kid and you want to protect your kid's mind, what are some of those safeguards you should put in place? I think you should look for red flags. And the, the our biggest red flag is when your kid's cell phone's not charged hmm. or when you take that cell phone away or when you tell them we're having digital time out. We're all putting our cell phone in the basket on the kitchen counter for the next three hours. Ooh. And just watch their observe. You use your five senses to see what they're feeling because most times – it's not pleasant. Yeah. It, but, well, and they use their cell phone for school. I mean, they use their cell phone just like we do for a lot of really productive causes. So it's hard to say, how do you draw that line? And when you're 13 or 15 and that brain is not even frontal lobes or not even anywhere near to be being closely developed, yeah. they don't have that, you know, okay, well, let me stop and think through this. No, they go to the amygdala, which is the emotional control center in the brain. What? You want me to give up my phone? What? And the kicker is, mm -hmm. is they see their parents and oh. how their parents use their phone. Sure, of course. Of course. It's, you know, um, I learned it from you. <laughs> <laughs> that line hurts. That, it gets you right in the soul. It, it does hurt. And that's the hard part is we have to be role models, yeah. you know, instead of, and and I've done it when one of my kids is talking to me, I've picked up my phone, uh-huh, 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 but we've got to learn when our kid's talking to us, put the phone down, look them in the eye, and that, what were you saying? A lot of great tips there, and I got to thank our guest, Lee Richardson. Just do a quick Google search, you can find her on there. And part of what she does is she talks about some of these problems that kids are facing. It's a whole different generation that are facing a whole different slew of problems that weren't around when your generation and my generation were growing up. She joins us on the Quiver River Electric Camo X guest line, Lee Richardson. Just do a quick search for her on there. And the uh, Brain Performance Center on social media, you can find her there.